He strengthens our faith in waiting. It is in waiting that you get faith strengthened. Faith is not strengthened when you see things happening. Faith is strengthened before things begin to happen. Why? Because of the waiting period. When you choose to wait on God, God rewards us with the blessings that are large and unexpected. Now, waiting is like planting a garden. You see, you put a seed on the ground. And then when you put a seed on the ground, you water it. After you water it, you wait. Can you see? Already the impatience, I can touch it. Just waiting there like, Aga, what is she thinking about? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm teaching you how to wait and how uncomfortable waiting is. Now I say, wait, when you plant, you wait. And you wait. And when you're waiting, you learn to be quiet. You don't wait talking. You don't go to the seed and say, bloody get up, grow now. You don't do that. When you put a seed on the ground, if you go and, and, and get impatient and begin to exhume it and say you're coming out, you're coming forth in Jesus' name, it will come out, but it will never bring forth. So it will come out, but it will never bring forth. Why? Because you are in a hurry. When you put a seed on the ground, whatever seed it is, whether it's a seed for ministry, whether it's a seed for marriage, whether it's a seed for life, whether it's a seed for business, whether it's a seed for children, whatever seed you put on the ground, you must wait until the fullness of time. Because I promise you, in the fullness of time, it will deliver. If you water it and wait upon it, at the end of the day, it's going to deliver. Supposing you grow impatient and begin to dig out your, 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 your plants, whatever it is that you've put through. The waiting has been for God to bring out the new you. That's why you've been waiting. The reason why you've been where you are in life is so that God, faith, can bring out the new you. Because God is not going to work with the old us. He wants to bring out the new person in you. Somebody say, I'm going to wait. He wants to bring a precious fruit that can be served in the universe. And when I look at you, I see that fruit. I said when I look at you, I see that fruit. I said again when I look at you, I see that fruit. Fruits that are about to be served to the entire universe. That people will say, surely there is power in waiting. Surely it pays to wait on the Lord. Somebody say, I will wait. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, I want you to see about the God of the new. In, chapter, uh, in the chapter that we read, Isaiah invites us into a theological vision of what life can be for God's faithful people. Now, I want you to understand, in this chapter, he proclaims a creator who has always been in control of history. God has spoken about things before they came to pass demonstrating both omniscience and the power to effect the divine purposes over the years. Now, I want you to understand, God alone has the power to speak new things into being. Why? Because he is God. He is the beginner and the ender. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the first and he is the last. In verse 17, we read that the Lord reassures these devastated people. I want you to understand that they were absolutely devastated. And God came out to come and reassure them. And what did he start by saying in verse 17? He said, the former things shall not be remembered to or, or come to mind again. Let me tell you, the thing that is killing you, you're coming to a point. You will forget that you ever even lived in that situation in Jesus' name. Today when I tell people that I used to sleep on the floor in a widow's house, they actually think it must be a joke. Because even me, I tell as if it was somebody else's story. But before, I would tell it when I'm already like this. <laughs> I would cry and weep because of the magnitude of the trouble. But then God brings me to a place when, when, when God brings you out, you try to remember where you are. I promise you, you will not be remembering. Hiya! Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Now, I want you to understand that all that recent history had held for Judah was terror. Terror of the Babylonians. 
the destruction of Jerusalem temple, the forcible dislocation of the, the leaders in Judea. I want you to understand that perhaps even Judah's sinfulness was, 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 a, it was, was a thing that they kept on remembering that brought them to this place. And then guess what? It left them desolate with nothing. They could see no light at the end of the tunnel. Now let me just try and paint for you some little picture. These were people of God. These were people that had come to a point with their walk in God that they had started doing wayward things. And so God now allows King Nebuchadnezzar because let me tell you, and I'm going to show you that the things that happen in this life, God allows them. <laughs> yeah. So King Nebuchadnezzar comes in and he takes the cream of the land according to a message I preached a few weeks ago. He came and took everybody. And, and, and I, can, I want you to imagine that the people that you love are taken away from you. The Bible says the houses were burnt down. The Bible says their walls were brought down. The Bible says that everything they lived for was brought down. Can you imagine living in a time where everything you could hold on to has been taken away from you? Including the people you knew. The neighbors that you were laughing with. The neighbors you were playing with. Everybody is taken away. And the Bible says only the poor useless people were left behind. And so here you are. Everything you knew, everything you understood has gone out of your life. And now you're in some form of wilderness that you can't even fathom or begin to explain. Am I bringing it home? Now some situations we go through in life, they force us to begin to ask ourselves, is God even here? Does God even care? Does God even understand the kind of pain that I am in? If God really understood, would I go through this kind of pain? I came to let you know, not only does he understand, but he is in the middle of it. 